Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. In this short video, we're going to be covering the difference between huruf and mad and harf and lean, or if you will, what is huruf and mad and what is harf and lean. So, first and foremost, you need to understand that al mad is one of the things that we study in Tajweed, and it is that you elongate your voice with one of the following letters that we're going to cover. So, al mad is that pretty much you elongate your voice when reading the Quran in certain places due to the rules of Tajweed. And one of those places is with the following letters that we're going to be covering. So one of those is Huruf and Mad, and then the other one is Harf and Lin. So let's start with Huruf and Mad, which can be roughly translated as, <clears throat> which can be roughly translated as the elongated letters. So Huruf and Mad is the Wow, the Ya, and the Alif when these two conditions are met. The wow, the ya, and the alif, when these two conditions are met. The first one is that they have a sukun on them. So when you have a wow or a ya or alif that have a sukun on them. And then likewise, the second condition is that the letter before them, you need the letter before the wow, the letter before the ya, the letter before the alif, has the corresponding haraka. What's meant here by the corresponding haraka is the sister haraka for the letter. So the sister haraka for the wow is the dhamma. Because if you really pay attention, the dhamma is just a mini wow, right? Because both of them are making the same vowel sound fundamentally, which is u. Then the corresponding haraka for the ya is the kesra. Because again, both of them are making the same vowel sound pretty much, which is the e. And then for the alif, of course, it's the fetha because both of them are making the same vowel sound, which is the a ah sound. So whenever you have a wow, a ya, yeah, or an alif, and these two conditions are met, these three letters are going to be called huruf and met, or they're going to be called harf met. So when you have a wow that has sukun on it, and the letter that's coming before it has a dhamma on it, this wow here, like in this example here, is going to be called harf met, an elongated letter. And we're going to say, and the reason why it's called an elongated and the reason why it's called an elongated letter or the elongated letter, if you will, is because you're going to elongate the vowel sound u when this happens. So instead of me just saying yadu, I'm gonna say yadu, yadu, or the ya, whenever you have a ya with a sukun on it, and it's preceded with a letter that has a kesra on it, then again this ya is going to be called a harf med, and you're going to elongate the e sound. So instead of me just saying fikum, I'm going to say fikum, fikum. Then finally, for the alif, the corresponding haraka, quote unquote, for the alif is the fetha. So whenever you have an alif and the letter before it has a fetha on it, which is actually every single time an alif comes, then you're going to elongate the a sound. So pretty much you're going to open your mouth more than usual. So instead of me just saying here, bi hijaratin, bi hijaratin. I'm going to open my mouth a bit more and I'm going to say bihijara, bihijara, bihijara. So those are what huruf and mad are. Huruf and mad are the wow, the ya, and the alif. When they have a sukun on them and the letter coming before it has the corresponding haraka, which is a dhamma for a wow, a kasra for a ya, and a fatha for alif. And when this happens, you're going to elongate the respective vowel sound. Yad'u. So those are huruf and mad. Now, harf and lean, harf and lean could be referred to as the smooth letters. And the thing with harf and lean is that they're called the smooth letters because they're very easy on the tongue. They're very easy on the tongue. They're very smooth on the tongue, if you will. And these are the wow and the ya when they have a sukun on them. But the letter that's coming before it has a fatha. So whenever you have a wow or a ya with sukun on it, and the letter coming before it has a fatha on it, this wow and this ya is going to be referred to as harf lean, a smooth leather, a smooth leather, a smooth, a smooth letter. Why? Because it's very easy on the tongue. Qawl, so that is what huruf and mad and harf and lean are. And these are very, very important to understand in order to understand the mudud. 
in order to understand the different elongation that you're going to have to do in the science of Tajweed when you recite the Quran.